a clipping mask allows you to use the contents of a layer to mask the contents of other layers. Let's take a look at a few examples. In this first one, we have a shape layer with a circle that has been turned into a clipping mask for this layer on top. The layer on top contains an image of a brick wall. So the effect that we get here is that the layer with the brick wall takes the shape of the circle in the clipping mask. In this next example, we have the same image of the brick wall, but this time the clipping mask is a text layer that says brick wall. So the effect that we get here is that the image only shows through the text. I'm going to show you how to create this effect. First, I'm going to open up my image. And then I'm going to select the type tool and I'll add in the text. I've chosen a large thick font so that I'll be able to see more of the image when I turn this into a clipping mask. So the clipping mask needs to be directly below the layer that you want to mask. So we need to move this text layer down. But the problem right now is that my brick image is on a locked background layer. This means that it's always going to stay below everything else. So I'll have to right click on it first and then choose layer from background. And then I'll give it a new name and click OK. And now it's just a regular layer that can be rearranged along with the other layers. To move the text layer, I'll just click and drag it down. And then I'll right click on the brick wall layer and I'll choose create clipping mask to complete the effect. You'll see that the layer name of the text layer is now underlined and that the layer thumbnail for the brick wall has been indented to the right with the addition of this arrow that points down. This indicates that the text layer is now a clipping mask for the brick wall layer. And if you bring your attention back to the document window, you will see that the brick wall can only be seen through the text that we have. In this next example, I have a Photoshop document that contains three layers of different types of fruit. I'm going to create a circle and use that as a clipping mask for all these layers. Here, you'll see that you can use one clipping mask for multiple layers. So I'm going to choose the ellipse tool and I'll choose the shape layers option in the options bar. This will ensure that when I draw the shape, it's going to be in its own layer. And now that I have my shape layer, I'm going to drag it down to the bottom. And then I'll right click on each layer and choose create clipping mask. And now, as you can see, the circle shape layer is now a clipping mask for all of these layers on top. If you want to move the objects around, you can use the move tool and each layer will still be treated separately. You'll be able to move both the contents of the clipping mask as well as the other layers with no problem. To release a layer from a clipping mask, just right click on the layer and choose release clipping mask. We can give this example a softer effect by applying a Gaussian blur filter to the clipping mask. Select the clipping mask and then go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Since this is a shape layer, Photoshop will ask you to rasterize the shape before it applies the filter. Click OK, then specify a blur radius and click OK. This will blur the shape and will give the clipping mask softer edges.